Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Freddie Mercury, born Farrokh Bulsara in the British Protectorate of Zanzibar, Freddie's oversized talent was matched only by his flamboyance and exuberance. In life, his four octave voice, since studied by scientists in an attempt to unlock the secrets of its intricacies and awesomeness, here are some lesser known conspiracy elements of Mercury's incredible legacy. Why did Freddie Mercury hide secret messages in his lyrics? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Does Bohemian Rhapsody have a hidden message in it? Did Freddie Mercury predict his own end? You know that moment when you're singing along to We Are The Champions by Queen and you build up to that climatic finish. We are the champions, no time for losers, cause we are the champions. You belt out and then the song ends. No, of course it doesn't, you round off with Of The World, with all the heart and soul of Freddie Mercury in full pomp. Except Freddie never ended with that line. This phenomenon in which a large number of people misremember something has come to be known as the Mandela Effect, inspired by the discovery that huge numbers of people remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 80s, when in fact he died in 2013, 23 years after being released. The conspiracy theory has been around for a while, but it's only come into the mainstream over recent years. With social media platforms and forums like Reddit, people across the world have been connecting with each other, discovering that the way they remember something isn't so. A number of famous Mandela effects have been passed around over recent years such as the realisation that the US children's book Berenstain Bears is actually the Berenstain Bears, or that Darth Vader doesn't actually say Luke I am your father, but no I am your father. The photo of guitarist Brian May in a 666 t-shirt is in fact showing 46664 Nelson Mandela's prisoner number. There are also Freemason accusations fueled by the appearance of a Freemason ring sported by Freddie Mercury in the flick and the real one's penchant for signing into hotels under the name F. Mason. Now this is where it gets a bit more daft. Some people believe these misquotes and mispronunciations are because we have accidentally travelled between universes or that history has been deliberately altered and remnants of the true reality remain. Did Freddie Mercury predict his death before AIDS? Everyone loves Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. People have heard it for years and years. When they first decided to release the song in 1975, it didn't get that many great reviews. Some saying the song didn't make any sense, but a lot of people said it was way too long to even make it on the radio. The song was originally put on the album A Night at the Opera. Freddie Mercury, originally named Farrokh Bulsara, wrote Bohemian Rhapsody like he wrote everything. He was also a perfectionist and wanted things certain ways, which gave Bohemian Rhapsody that vibe. After all of the hate it got, it is now known as the most listened to song of the 21st century, so that's an accomplishment and a massive step up. What makes the song so incredibly interesting is not only that it's mixed with opera and rock and roll, but no one really knows what it's about and none of these theories have been confirmed. Some people have assumed that it's a song Freddie wrote about coming out. People justify this as by saying in the lyric when it says, Mama, I just killed a man, put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger, now he's dead. They refer to this as Freddy killing straight Freddy, that he's now coming out, changing it up a little. But along with that conspiracy, it's stating he loved men. What most people don't know is that no, Freddy was actually bisexual. He had a fiancée, Mary Austin, 
back before he ever did experimentation with men. Even after, him and Mary went their separate ways and still kept in touch as friends. And when he was going clubbing and doing everything with everyone, there was a woman named Barbara Valentin. She was an Austrian actress and was a really close friend of Freddy's. She would go and in a way hunt down men for Freddy. But not only were they friends, but they had a little bit of a something on the side. They ended them sleeping together once Freddy started assuming he got the disease. Freddy was having an identity crisis. Another group of people say that in the song, Freddy is having an identity crisis. Not just with his sexuality, but just himself. He was struggling with what kind of a person he wanted to be and who he wanted to be talked about as, which again, could be an actual option to think about. I mean, his dad wasn't really accepting of what Freddie wanted to do with his life and career. Lack of acceptance can easily trigger feelings such as not having self-worth. Did Freddie Mercury predict his death? The song Bohemian Rhapsody has a lot involved with it. It's a six-minute song that transforms from a soft rock standpoint to an operatic standpoint and then jumps right into a heavier rock. There's a lot going on here. Also, the amount of afterlife references in the song are absolutely insane. Bismillah, Beelzebub. Beelzebub is identified in the New Testament as the devil, prince of demons. It could also be a derogatory corruption of Baal, Zabul. But anyway, there are just a lot of references of death in the song. In the beginning of the song, it says, Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. It in a way sounds like life is just dragging him by his legs and there's nothing he can do, wondering why it's happening to him and how life can be so cruel. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see, I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy. To back this up, is that he's saying he needs no sympathy because he gave himself the disease? The fact that his friends tried to warn him about the awful disease spreading around and they were worried about him and he shrugged everything off. Clearly he wasn't that worried. And when it says, look up to the skies and see, well, the last album Queen made was called Made in Heaven and it was released after Freddie died. It had some of Freddie's and Queen's unreleased tracks on it that they put on the album after he died. When it says that, what if it is referencing Freddy telling his family and friends to look up to the skies and see him in heaven? The line, Mama, I just killed a man. This line is interesting because in a lot of other theories, people take this as Freddy killing a part of himself. Well, in this one, could it be that he actually talks about throwing his life away? What if that could be Freddy referencing that he killed himself by making the hurtful decisions he did? Going out clubbing and doing everything with everyone. Wasn't that smart around the time because of the disease, but he did it anyway. He could be referencing that there was something he could have changed about his lifestyle, but didn't. What made it sad was that not many people knew there was such a thing as safe interactions because they never knew of something such as unsafe relationships. So what also contributed to his death was the fact not many people had the knowledge. The song goes into saying that Freddie really was having regrets on how his life had panned out. Talking about how he did something wrong and apologising for it. Why would he be apologising about regretting it incredibly and saying he threw his life away? Because he really didn't have that much of a hard time going out to clubs and being seen going into clubs with people knowing what he was doing. The next line after that was, Mama, oh, didn't mean to make you cry. If I'm not back again this time tomorrow, carry on, carry on, as if nothing really matters. It sounds like he's saying if he leaves permanently, his mother needs to move on with her life. 
why would he leave permanently? Then he goes on saying goodbye to everyone he loves and saying he had to face the truth, meaning he could have had to now live with the fact he was not going to live his full life, and he was fairly young when he died. He was 45 years old, so that was way too young. He should have gotten many more years. Later on in the song, after you skip the operatic section, it says, So you think you can love me, then leave me to die. Could that be a reference to the person that gave him AIDS? Does he even know who gave him AIDS? We don't know these things, and we'll never know. The theory doesn't completely end there. Fun fact, Freddie always said, his exact quote even was, I will never make old bones. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page.